This is Tiger Cats post game on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Toronto Argonauts 28, Hamilton Tiger Cats 8. Three and nine are the Hamilton Tiger Cats sitting at the bottom of the CFL East Division. This is the Tiger Cats post game. I'm Bubba O'Neill along with Andy Fantuz, and we'll have a round table a little bit later in the broadcast. A couple things to review here, Andy. Eight, eight at the half. Pretty good feeling, but a familiar theme comes back to bite the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Yeah, even late in the third quarter, it's it's 11 to eight for the Toronto Argonauts. Hamilton's about to get the win in the fourth quarter. It's 11-8 going into the fourth quarter and just, it's like a broken record. It's just a snowball effect of negative plays, turnovers, and big touchdowns to all accumulate to a 20-0 second half point difference for Toronto uh, and three second half turnovers by the Ticats. Misfiring on the offense, and I knew a, a lot was not expected from the Ticat offense. We could not say that we were going to expect uh, a Dane Evans or a Matthew Schultz-like offense. We you know, ran over that in the pregame that we would probably see something a little bit more simplified, more ball control-like. But unfortunately, they could not pick up first downs to work time off the clock, uh, to switch field position. It was a challenge all day long. It was, a, it was a grind. I mean, both teams were grinding it out. And then in the second half, I mean, Hamilton had a total of, of four first downs, but three of them were in garbage time at the end of the game. So they had a first down on their opening drive of the second half, and then two and out, two and out, two and out, two and out, until the, st the turnover started. So it, you, you can't win ball games like that. There was, a, there was a quarterback switch there, you know, late in the third quarter that uh, I'm not sure if it was an injury or not, but Jalen Morton came in and, and uh, you know, really didn't show any type of promise there. And so Jamie Newman came back in to finish the game. Uh, you know, it's, it, it, it seems like we're saying the same kind of thing here at the, in the post game show over and over again with the second half performance, with the, you know, the, even some of the penalties in the second half, you could see some of the negativity creeping in and it's just getting sloppy in certain ways uh, on the field. So I, I, I tell you, I mean, it's happened many times this year where we're sitting here thinking, I like where we're at at halftime. I like where we're at going into the fourth quarter. And, uh, and just the wheels fall off. The Tiger Cats pro, uh, post game. We will talk to Coach O. A couple of questions to certainly ask him in a very, very difficult loss here at home. Uh, we will talk to our... A player in the locker room will announce our performer of the game as presented by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. And then we'll go four wide with our post-game show. Courtney Steven, Mike Daly will join us here. Uh, Andy, while we have a chance here, let's review your car star keys to victory. Yeah, let's do that. So the fir first one was explosive plays. And... It wasn't even close uh, in this game. I mean, Hamilton had, had one, technically had one explosive play. They had a 20-yard run by Sean Thomas Erlington in the first half. They had a chance for maybe a couple catches, but didn't come up. So just one explosive play. Uh, you know, when you're trying to grind out yards all game long with a third and fourth string quarterback, you need to have those chunk plays. And they just, there wasn't even a lot of opportunities uh, like meaning they didn't take a lot of chances to get those. They didn't throw a lot of deep balls. And then when they did, they didn't come up with them. So only one for Hamilton. Toronto had five, two of them for touchdowns, a 26-yard touchdown in the first half, a 27-yard touchdown in the second half, a big 53-yard play right before the 26-yard touchdown in the first half. So that drive, there was two wide open receivers, 53 followed by 26 for a touchdown. And, uh, and then just sprinkled a few others throughout the game. So they had five explosive plays, uh, and that, that's all they needed. They didn't really need to take any shots. So big, big uh, fail on number one, key, car star, key, three key. Number two. Number two was starting field position, and another big loss here. Toronto started on their own 43-yard line on average. They started on the Hamilton side of midfield four times. Ouch. 
where Hamilton started on their own 30-yard line. So it's a 13-yard difference, over a first down every single time. And they had zero times starting on the Toronto side of half. So not going to get it done. There was a couple special teams penalties, a couple of slips trying to catch the punts. Uh, obviously, the turnovers come into play with that, uh, which is number three, uh, car star three, three key number three. So we'll get to that, I guess. Sure. So the turnover ratio was four to two in favor of Toronto. Two interceptions, two turnovers on downs. Um, so that certainly helps the uh, the field position battle, but it all it all comes into play, and, and that's why that's why it's one of the keys is because there's so many factors that are coming into the field position. But Toronto, um, excuse me, Hamilton, that they've only matched or won the turnover ratio twice this season out of 12 games. And and against the Argos, it's been horrific. Horrific. I, 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 I think can't actually call one of those was it, was it because it was a 0-0, zero, zero, if I'm not mistaken, back in like uh, the second, the time that they won here at home. Uh, second game. The second game, I think it was 0-0. Zero, zero. So, but other than that, it's been, yeah, I mean, the last two games has been 10-3. to three, And you're just not going to win any games like that. Now, mind you, when you're going forward on third and seven at the end of the game, like, you got to take those into considerations. But stats are stats. They're objective. And so as far as the three keys are concerned, um, I think they, they were pretty accurate today because Hamilton lost them all pretty badly and, and that shows on the scoreboard. Our performer of the game, we kind of tossed this around. There are a couple options there on a tough day for the Tiger Cats here in front of a record crowd, 25,266. Most ever to see a game here at Tim Hortons Field. Jamal Roll provided some certain uh, excitement there uh, in the game where really it felt like the game could go it either way. Yeah, he had four tackles. And he, he did, you know, have the only points in the game, essentially, for the Cats. He, he took that interception back to the house. 66 yards. Uh, so that was an exciting play, keeping them in the ball game in the first half. And, um, and I, I, you know, I had to go back to the film, but I didn't notice any of those, uh, those big explosive plays being against him uh, throughout the game. So he's our performer of the game today. Hercules Tire, right on our strength. Let's bring in Mike Daly um, from a defensive perspective. And we knew this was going to be a game that basically uh, the defense would have to play at a higher level than they normally would have because of the, fo the fact that you had two young quarterbacks playing in this game that were not going to be able to put up the amount of points that we would normally see possibly under a Schiltz or an Evans. How did they fare today? Yeah, I mean, early on you look at it and, you know, they get two interceptions, which was a huge factor for this Tie Cats defense, right? Because that's kind of where it was lacking when you look at the turnover ratio that the Tie Cats are experiencing right now. The defense needed to come up with some some big time plays on defense. And I thought, you know, obviously the Jamal Roll interception touchdown where he capitalized on the tip, right? And then the interception in the end zone to keep them away from points. Um, I think that was that was a good aspect of the Tie Cats defense. Where it ended up falling apart, and Andy mentioned it, is just the missed tackles in the second half, right? I mean, you look at it when they're coming out in the, the third quarter, you have them pinned at the 30, and Ouellette ends up getting two missed tackles down the sideline. There's a late penalty, right, with, with Cam Kelly, another 10 yards, and then the Argos get out of a, a backed-up position. So it's like a, a hot and cold thing for this defense right now, but I, I was very happy to see the Tie Cats get their hands on some interceptions, you know, because that was lacking initially. Yeah, when the Cats are, you know, when they're against the wind, you you really can't afford to be taking those 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 penalties and missing those tackles that are so uncommon for this team. So I think we're going to head down to the locker room here. Exclusive access to the coaching room. Time to check in with Coach Orlando Steinauer. That's presented by Access Storage. Coach, a tough one, a lot of crowd support here, really, really pulling for your defense and your offense for something to happen. How do you assess the, today's loss? We'll start with the crowd's effort, freaking unbelievable. Unbelievable, they just uh, showed up, they were loud, they were passionate, and uh, so just, uh, yeah, I can't say enough about that. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this is not how we envisioned it. Uh, we weren't uh, we weren't good enough. Period. 
Coach, was there um, an injury to, to change the quarterback in the third quarter, or was that just a, a coaching decision? Yeah, it was just a coaching decision. Tommy and I talked just to take a peek. There was a few things that uh, we had went over, and, and Jamie was just wasn't seeing some of the things that uh, we had went over in practice, so it wasn't a, a benching. It was just to give a change of pace. It's something that we had talked about going into the game, and uh, that's it. Yeah, Coach, heading into this bye week, what do you tell the guys, you know, coming up into the bye and knowing you all Winnipeg on the other end? What do you kind of get into their head while they, you know, go on this little bit of a break? Well, I just want them to clear their head. That's that's what it is. Like, uh, we, we know we know what needs to be done. And, uh, you know, we just got to be better coming out the other side. So I just encourage them to get away, make, make wise choices. And... Uh, get ready to come to work but going coming to work and showing up and working hard is not a challenge of this football team coach you're looking at the standings right now hamilton three and nine toronto improved to six and five still uh not that far away from getting to the top and i think we're kind of thinking that maybe it will be a first or second uh, position that you need to get into to make that playoffs still a lot of time left how do you keep the momentum keep away the negativity and keep these guys fired up to believe and uh, until you're mathematically uh, eliminated that this there's still a chance that's just what it is right there and you know that's you know that's the opportunity that we're afforded right now um, we're gonna have to play a lot better if we're even gonna think about uh, situations like that but uh, we're gonna control the next game the next practice the next meeting and that's uh, that's really what it is so yeah that, I don't I'm not gonna I don't again if you come in our building you're going to be hard pressed to find negativity frustration that's that that you'll find uh, and that's normal and that's you know and we don't accept we don't accept losing we're not not used to it around here and it's a different thing and a different emotion for everybody but yeah i don't subscribe to the negativity that you possibly were suggesting and we look forward to the positivity and seeing you guys back at practice all fired up getting ready for the great cup champions right here at tim hortons field thanks for joining us coach okay thanks guys Coach Orlando Steyer, uh, Steyer, our exclusive access to the coaching room. Uh, thanks for him to join us in a real tough situation. I think we've talked to him in some situations where uh, it's been real tough. I mean, it was some of these ones. But when you get this type of crowd support and people pulling for you, and really your team just doesn't perform to the way I think they envisioned, Mike, that's got to be real tough mentally. To kind of, and I know the coach talked about it, but to keep that negativity out of the locker room. Yeah, it's always tough. But, I mean, the positive outlook on it, and, you know, you mentioned it to Coach O, is they still have a, a great opportunity to get into the playoffs. And that's what the goal is at this point. It's you got to get into the playoffs because the hottest team going into the playoffs is the one that ends up pulling it out. So there's this, like, you know, sunshine over a, a complete dark cloud that people are looking at the Ticats with because... All they got to do is turn around a couple games, figure a few things out, and maybe this bye week is exactly what they need just to clear their head, come back, and execute. But I, I do truly believe Coach O when he says, you know what, in the locker room you'd be, you'd be hard-pressed to find guys that are negative, and it's just what do we got to do better to, to pull these games out. You could, hear, you could hear his emotion when we talked about the fans, right, and how, you know, he's so just disappointed for, for the fans, for the community. Uh, of course his team but um, man it's like we're like they're, we're still in there with them you know what I mean it's it, but this bye week does I, I agree it comes at a perfect time going in the final third of the season six games left I mean to, to think you're going to get first is a stretch a bit because you're going to have to win four more games than Toronto wins and there's only six games left and Toronto actually has seven games left so to think that Toronto's only going to win two out of seven, and then you have to win six out of six, is the is the is the first place scenario. So that's pretty unlikely. So it's like looking at second place, and I, I don't think the crossover is guaranteed by any means. Uh, Saskatchewan's got a tough schedule. Calgary has a tough schedule. A lot of Western teams. So you never know how that's going to shake out. But the one thing I thought he said that was really important is like. Forget about that. We just have to play better. We have to figure something out and figure out a way to play four quarters 
play turnover free or at least uh, take care of the ball better than we are to, to even be thinking about where we're going to do in the playoffs, right? Yeah, and it gets to the one play at a time kind of thing, right? And it's funny because, I mean, I guess not funny, but we feel that emotion even just sitting on this side. And I'm sure all the fans do as well, right? Where it's just like, oh my gosh, man, come on. You know what I mean? Uh, it's tough. Let's bring in Cordy Steven to the round table. Um, Cordy, I'm going to go back to the first quarter and the first touchdown, the opening score of the game, the Argonauts. A 53-yarder to Banks, and then one play later, it's uh, McLeod Bethel Thompson to Ambles for 26 yards touchdown. Three play, 79-yard drive. Was there? Was that just a great drive by McLeod Bethel Thompson, or did you see some issues in the secondary? Well, it's not anything exotic that Toronto did, but it was something that was very smart by Coach Dinwiddie. When you get a defense in a four by one situation, you're able to dictate what coverage they're gonna be in. And based on the game film, they knew how the Ticats were gonna try and defend that formation. And that's how they're able to exploit it at the right time and set up uh, the offensive scoring range. So, you know, hats off to them. They brought their game plan. They made the plays that were there for them. And I think that's that's the difference that it's been all year for the Ticats. It's that, you know, they haven't been playing well enough to make mistakes like a 50 yard explosive. Uh, and that leads to points. So today, it didn't go their way. They were in it until the fourth, but they didn't they didn't close the door. Andy, um, <laughs> it's funny. I knew one of these games we were going to have to say something like this. Brandon Banks, two receptions, 80 yards, one touchdown, couple of runs, and a touchdown. He came to play. He did. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I thought at that first, that 53-yarder, you know, I, th I thought he could have scored on that, to be honest. And for some reason, he fell down to catch it. But um, certainly that run where he almost got tackled for about a six or eight-yard loss, able to um, kind of extend the play. He, he looked like he was trying to throw it for a sec and then ended up knifing it up the middle. And the, the Brandon Banks that we saw, you know, we knew from, from years past, we saw it on that one. And then and then a great a great slant and go play on the on the long touchdown. It was right after uh, right after an interception, and you, you know, oftentimes you go for the jugular after those turnovers, and that's what they did, and they came through. So it happened so quick. It uh, from the from the third and one that cut stopped to the bank touchdown, then the interception to the touchdown. The next play, it's uh, it was just very deflating. You could see throughout the stadium. Let's go right back to the locker room. Let's connect with our player of the game, Hercules Tire, right under strength player of the game, Jamal Roll. This exclusive post-game interview is brought to you by Access Storage. Jamal, tough one today. Uh, you made that big play, the big touchdown. You had the fans going on your side. It just could not. Uh, was it a matter of the defense was just on the field a little bit too much today? No, I wouldn't say that. I think we were prepared to be on the field however long it was, uh, however long the game was, but. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a great play. I'm glad I was able to make the play and uh, get a you know, spot and some points. And uh, we were just trying to string a win, um, you know, trying to get the momentum out there. Jamal, as soon as you put your hands on the ball, you, you had a sense of urgency about you. And obviously that ended up in you getting into the end zone. What was the mindset of that back end coming into this game? And how, how were you planning to attack Toronto? Uh, we know they're dangerous with their quarterback with fast release, right? So we were trying to get physical with the receivers and uh, establish, like, bump and run. And we played well throughout the game. It was just, uh, if we could, we would, ha we would have some plays back. Uh, man, we were just trying to be physical with the receivers and get hands on and disrupt timing and, uh, you know, to hopefully come, come with takeaways. Jamal, it looked like an uh, extremely physical game there. I was on the sideline for a bit, and was that kind of the mindset coming in as is gang tackling and, and hard hitting and, and really uh, put your put your uh, signature on the game early? I mean, it's Labor Day. Uh, we were expected to play 60 minutes of hard-nosed football. We know uh, everybody that played the game before us, and we know what it meant to the city. And so we were just trying to play our hearts out and um, give the fans what they came, came to see. Hey, Roll. Uh, nice to see you get into the end zone there, but... Um, you know, what, what do you kind of do with, I guess, your first group with the DBs just to 
get ready for this next little stretch because obviously every game means you know absolutely everything for the rest of the season so you're a positive guy what are you kind of telling that group and leading them with uh, well we never play a perfect game so going forward we just try to learn um, learn from each game and going forward we just try to uh, like I said, learn from the mistakes and just learn what we did well, learn what we didn't do so well, and um, and just take it to the next game. Every game is an opportunity, and um, every guy has a resume. And so we're just trying to play the best ball we can play. Jamal, thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy your bye week, and as a coach said, clear your head, get ready for a wild little stretch to get back into that playoff picture. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Jamal, roll for tackles. 66-yard pick six in the first half. He's a performer of the game as well, presented by Hercules Tie, a ride on our strength. So I guess, guys, let, let, let's let's just go to we're down to about nine minutes here. I got to ask you a question here. Third quarter, going into the fourth quarter, the game is still kind of hanging at it's 11 to 8. Uh, and there was a quarterback change on a, and a turnover on downs third and one and they don't get it. It seemed to change the game. Yeah, that was a, I mean, you know, Coach O always talks about certain plays that completely change a game, and that was one of them for sure. When you get a turnover on downs on a quarterback sneak on the third and one where you expect to get it, right? There's going to be one time in the season where you don't get it, and it just happened to bite them, in, bite them in this game where it's, you know, close game in their own end. They don't get it, turns around, but that's a product of... You know, now you're at your fourth string quarterback, getting him under center to do sneaks. And maybe he hasn't been there a ton during the season and practice throughout that season. And yeah, that was a huge, huge turning point because that's automatically flipped field and, and points right away for the Argos. Yeah, for me, uh, it's a three point game. You just got the wind. Like you said, the third, the fourth string quarterback. I don't like how he caught, he got the ball and went laterally for one on a quarterback sneak, but I am a big believer in setting a mindset that we're going to go for it every single time within a yard and just get that in your head because that's got to be automatic. However, <laughs> in a game like this where you're having trouble pushing the ball downfield, it's a field position game. And Bob, you and I talked about it. We're just starting the fourth quarter. We just got the wind. Three-point game. I mean, are you thinking that Jalen Morton's going to go, you know, 80 yards downfield for a touchdown at that point. Maybe this is the one time I would agree to sort of punt the ball and let your defense, let the strength of your team do some plays. Now, I'm not necessarily question the coaching decision, but that was a, such a huge, huge turn. It was so, you could see the whole momentum in, in, in the stadium. It just flipped. It's like, oh, boy, we've been here before, you know. Yeah, and uh, and Andy, I mean, I'll argue with you a little bit on that because you you look around the league and it's third and one, you have to have it. Exactly like you said. It's got to be one of those things where you absolutely have to have it. And to have that happen at that point, at that failed position, you know, going in the fourth quarter, it is, it's just, it, it killed the momentum if there was any for the Ticats at that time. And it, that's one of those things where exactly, you're exactly right. Fall forward. Don't go outside, get that one yard, just trust your big boys up front and, and go get that one yard. But the crazy thing is, even with the turnover on downs backed up deep in your own end and Toronto scoring, it still wasn't over yet. Right. It still wasn't over yet. It's, I thought. A, ten, it's a 10 point game. I mean, because they cash in on a three play, three play, 23 yard drive. That's a Banks four yard touchdown run. So that's making it 18 to eight. And there's still, there's still, you know, double digits left on the clock. Absolutely. And I think from that point, the momentum shifts, of course, you feel that. But you have to, you know, dig inside yourself and find out, OK, what is actually working? And let's just get a heavy dose of that. You know, let's just get a heavy dose of that. Simplify it, whittle it down. I, I look back at 2017. It was a time where notoriously the, the Ticats were struggling. I was a part of that team. Um, and so just speaking from personal experience, when the shift happened from going from that 0-8 team to that 6-4 and team that finished the season, it wasn't like they cleared house and brought an entire new roster in. It's like the majority of the same guys, you know? And uh, I think there's a catalyst that has to present itself to make that change, and I don't know what it is, but the team's definitely going to be searching for it. And uh, if they can find it, there's still hope. 
Andy, let me throw this to you here. And this is, we talk about the situation that you're down to your third and fourth string quarterbacks and that the rushing game was going to be important today or at least to establish the run to help set up the pass. Pappy White, one run. Jalen Ro uh, Morton, quarterback, two runs. Uh, Tim White, wide receiver, one run. Jamie Newman, quarterback, six runs. Your two running backs, Sean Thomas, Erlington, three carries. Don Jackson, three carries. Is that a problem? It, it's hard to say because it's you, you, you go with the flow of the game. And there were, in the first half, it seemed like the amount of running was appropriate. Um, and then once you get down late in the game, it's hard to keep running the ball. So, uh, you know, you want to be feeding these guys, but obviously on the other side of the ball, Toronto, if they're, if you're not throwing it deep at all, they're loading the box. So it's hard to run. So it's hard to call these plays. Um, yeah, I mean, of course you want to get more touches to your, to your, to your playmakers and, and, and Don Jackson and, and SDE.